Let's talk about my predictions for real estate market for the second part of 2024. And I will be focusing on South Florida market. However, these rules, they apply for all markets throughout the United States. And as I've been talking to a lot of buyers and sellers, they both waiting for change. Buyers, they waiting for the crash of 2008, so the prices will significantly drop and the interest rates will come down to post-pandemic era when they can get a mortgage for 3%. When the sellers, they also waiting for change when the buyers will jump on their listing and they'll pay whatever price the sellers want and realistically, these plans not going to happen. Well, we, what we're realistically looking for, and I'm not just basing on my own experience and my own knowledge in real estate, and as you probably know, I've been in real estate for over a decade. I also based my opinion on leading economists' opinion. We're not going to see much change at all, as Colin Powell promising us uh, a little bit of release with interest rates, I don't think they're going to fall. I think we're lucky if we're going to go in mid-6%, um, probably probably upper 6%, upper part of 6%. And that's not going to change market much. It will give us a little bit of release, but I don't think buyers are going to be that excited about this change. So the market is going to stay the same. And what we see in the, on the market right now, we see that an inventory builds up, especially in South Florida with all the rules about associations and reserves. We see more and more sellers just simply can't afford condos anymore and they put in their condos on the market. And not that many buyers want to get into condo situation when they don't know what their monthly HOA fees will be with all the reserves that need to be built in the condo association. So sellers want to get rid of these condos. And South Florida market, especially Miami market, is full with condos and uh, cops. This, these properties, they will depreciate in price. And I see more and more sellers losing money on condos when they bought it a couple of years ago, and now we see significant increase in number of condos for sale. With single family homes, it's a little different thing. Uh, they don't depreciate that much. In fact, they still appreciate in price. We still see prices going up. It's a um, paradox that we see higher inventory, lower activity on the buyer side, and still higher and higher prices, especially in the single family home sector. Why is that happening? Simple thing, because they can. Sellers can increase the price because they have very little urge to sell. They have huge cushion of equity that they build up after pandemic throughout this tremendous growth that we've seen in the past couple of years. And now they're sitting on this cushion. If they need to sell, they can always get um, refi or g get a line of credit against their property and just simply rent it because the rent is not going down. Interestingly, rent is still going up. Even the price for condos actually decrease, not significantly, but still. Still, we don't see decrease in uh, rental market. So with all this being said, for sellers who have enough cushion in, in their um, equity, they likely just rent their property out and keep it rather than lowering the price. This is not happening in the condo market simply because they cannot afford paying the mortgage and paying their HOA and building up this cushion of um, reserves in the HOA and the difference between uh, rental and holding cost. Sometimes it's upside down. I've met with a lot of sellers who told me like, my monthly payments right now is 2,500 and I'm only getting 2,200 in rent. So my 
cash flow is negative 300. So in order for me to keep the property and rent it out, on the top of all the maintenance expenses, I have to pay this $300, which makes no sense for them because they, they want to uh, at least break even. So they're willing to lose a little bit of money and sell it for less. And since it's becoming a trend, that's something that uh, we see more and more often that sellers just simply okay to lose a little bit of money. So what else are we going to see in second part of 2024? We're definitely going to see a lot of confusion. And this confusion will be related with upcoming election. And I'm not political in this video, but I want to say that any change in the country, in the government, just simply leads to confusion. And, and when people confuse, they don't want to transact. So that means that we're going to have a lower number of transactions. But we're still going to have a lot of sellers who absolutely need to sell. No one's going to sell right now because they want to sell. A lot of sellers, they need to sell. They cannot afford it. It just makes no sense for them financially. So the inventory will continue to go up. So for the buyers, it's a good thing because they're going to see a slight release in the interest rates and much higher inventory. That means a lot more room for bargains. But on the flip side, it's still going to be a lot of confusion and buyers not going to react as fast. It's hard for me to prove that it's good time for the buyer to jump on the market and make the offer because market is not going to crash. Like, let's be real. All this equity, people are not going to give up at that, that easy. Why we, we saw this crash in 2008? Because the equity was upside down. Sellers were paying more and more and they owned even more and more every time they made the payment. So they decided, I don't want to do this anymore. These predatory loans were out there and they were taking equity of the sellers. Well, right now, these predatory loans are prohibited. And these regular loans that are in place, they actually build in equity for the sellers. So I don't think we're going to see crash. I actually don't think we're going to see much changes except for a little more inventory, more of a normal market. And is this a good thing? I think it's just a, it's just a market. I don't think there is good market or bad market. It's just a market. If you need to buy a home, then go ahead and do it. Don't try to wait the market. Same thing if you need to sell. Don't try to wait until it's going to be a better time. It's never going to be a better time. And if you can afford not to sell, don't sell it. However, if you need to buy or sell right now, I don't think you need to wait for anything. It's not about market. It's about you. It's about your goals. So make the decision the smart way. Don't try to time the market. Make the decision now.